Hello, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have come with another information that matters to us. Dear friends are thrilled. Our Prime Minister announces that Nigeria is truly, truly measuring up to that failed state that we are pushing it to. Yes, that is the measurement they should measure up with. And then, if they are failed, tell me what remains is for other countries to emerge from the so-called Nigeria with another name. Yes, every strategy used against them has worked because the country you're talking about is a scam itself. Their foundation is wrong. And those in leadership are doing their own selfish thing for their own family alone. That is what they have in mind. That's their motive, all right? They push forward to having everything owned by them, privatized. Finally, Fuel has, it has his 1,000, um, I think it's 1,200 Naira. Nigeria, within space of how many months that they hiked the price of Fuel, suddenly no control, everybody does whatever pleases them. And they even say that Buhari sold the fuel or the petroleum pure product up front, two years up front, <laughs> collected the money. That they are just supplying petroleum products without collecting money. Who is deceiving who? Who do you want to ask? How would you, how would you say that such a country is the country that you want to die in or you want to fight for? We are telling you to fight for what will work for you. You refused. And you are deceiving yourself. Well, we are not done with Nigeria. By the time we are done with Nigeria, like Mazinan Dekan said, in fact, Nigeria will be wiped out of the world map because it's a disgrace to whatever you call a country. You can't put Nigeria to measure up with any country at all in the whole world. And that's failure. Here, our Prime Minister, and you'll be, uh, you'll be marveled. Go in. I just want to encourage all of you, stay very strong, do not panic. We have beaten Nigeria hands down. Nigeria can never rise again. And just like the pronouncement has been given, Nigeria is nose diving and have nose dive. Nigeria is a collapsed country, it's a failed state. It has met every requirement as a failed state. I don't understand whether many of us actually know what first state is all about. There are, you know, there are requirements that, you know, the category where you categorize, uh, you know, a state and the state will become a failed state. Nigeria has met all these requirements as a failed state. They are now unable to solve their political and economic problem and crisis. And the Afro government is providing a solution to that. I am very, very happy that many of you that are here today are not just participant in what we are doing that many of you are deep rooted and they have come to see and hear firsthand information about what the Biafra government is doing and what we are intending to do and how we are doing it so you can also tell others you know i'm happy that the united kingdom for example had a workshop the other day where they were teaching about the iou where they were teaching about the id card and all that that means that you are not just uh, a follow a follow follow you are also you know, into the government and knows what is going on. And that's exactly the way it should be. Those who are not yet uh, conversant with what we are doing, you teach them, you tell them, you explain to them. When they have the question, you explain and answer their questions. So it is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We will protect every Biafran anywhere in the world, irrespective of whether you have tied my name as a baby and was dragging it in the street of Italy and other parts of Europe. It doesn't matter because I know those things doesn't touch me. You know, you are just being ignorant of who is Simon Ekpa, you know, and then you were misbehaving. So many people who were doing incantation with my name and all that, we even gave them followers in their platforms. When they when they when they blocked all their all their all their platform, we created and asked people to go and follow them. They have went and follow them. So if if they have succeeded in uh, silencing Simon Ekpa today, where would they be? What is going to be there? They would, they would just realize that, ah, we did not know we would have just allowed that guy. But the point is that 
you know, I came to this struggle prepared. I, I came to this struggle. When I mean prepared, I came prepared. Hi. And it's just that many people don't know. If you think you can bring Simon Ekpa down, you waste your time. You just disgrace yourself. And Simon Ekpa will continue to stand very strong. When I joined this struggle, I did not join to romance Nigeria. I did not join this struggle to start looking at faces. I joined this struggle with Iwe and Onuma. I am telling you the fact, and I have said this several times, many people don't understand what is Iwe and Onuma. Iwe and Onuma is the highest degree of anger. That's why I joined this struggle with. And I did not come to romance Nigeria. I come that Nigeria will end. I come that they will end the Usman Danfodio legacy. That legacy that every time they will be talking about Usman Danfodio, you will think that Usman Danfodio, you know, manufactured a plane. You will think that Usman Danfodio manufactured a car. Or he invented one, uh, one uh, you know, uh, Ihela machine or something like that. No, Usman Danfodio have a legacy for killing Northern Nigeria, for killing Aousas, conquering them and turn them into what you see today outside of Fulani. That is the legacy that Usman Danfodio brought to Northern Nigeria. And today, they have Usman Danfodio University. They are using him as, that is what they, they continue that particular legacy. That is the reason why the Fulanis are killing innocent Christians in the Northern Nigeria and the Middle Belt. It is to continue the Usman Danfodio legacy. And I am here to end it. I will end it. The end of Usman Danfodio legacy will start from this year. Because what I am telling you, go and mark it. It will start from December 2nd. Once we exit Nigeria, that legacy is gone, completely gone, because they will not have any other place to conquer. Is it us that you are going to cross our border to come and start saying you want to conquer Biafra? We did not conquer us when we were in Nigeria. It's not going to be possible. Another thing is that Biafras have seen that we have a map. That map has not been disputed by anybody. That is to show you how far we have gone. I am still waiting for the uh, intellectuals, as our leader used to call them, to come and debate or dispute the, the map of Biafra. And we have uh, administrators, every person have voted in all these 40 states. It is not, nobody is disputing it. And that should be, and I know that that is what is actually worrying these people, because how did this guy come up with map? I did not come up with any map. The people themselves, were the one who have, you know, presented them their map to Biafra government, and we did not impose any map on anybody. That is the good thing about consultation, and of course, using a true democratic process to liberate the people. That's what we have done, and that is exactly what the uh, multi-dimensional approach means: exploring every approach, every possibilities from every context from every, uh, you know, from every solution that you can think of. And that's why we are using this multidimensional approach, the political approach, the diplomatic approach, and the armed struggle approach. When they hear armed struggle, ah, you want to carry arms against Nigeria, where are they today? When we started, all of you, when we started, where do you have the arms? Where is the money? What is happening today? And we are just starting. That's why I told them, you can never defeat this army of Biafra. Never. Not in this generation. Not in generation to come. Not what Ojuku and the Biafra army did in the 67 we were doing. We have learned our lesson. We dictate how this the how we are going to fight you. And we are fighting you the way we want. And there is nothing you can do to change the tactics of this fight. That is one thing I trust about the Biafra Defense Forces. Well grounded in what we are doing. You know, when instruction is given, they know exactly what to do. So you can never defeat us this time around. We will fight you until, you, even if it is one person that is remaining, not from the Biafra side, though, because we can never, we can never remain. It can never go bad that we are going to fight until we remain one. Never. But you see, Nigeria terrorist forces we will fight them until they remain one, and that one will be buried alive. Thank you very much. Biafra will come. You either allow us to go in peace or. You are going to remain pieces and Biafra will still go. And you see this thing we are asking now that you must recognize the Biafra referendum. It is going to end in the round table when, we, when the stupid and foolish ones have died in Biafra land. Because many of them 
Many of those soldiers, those terrorists they are sending, they are going to die, all of them in Biafra land. You cannot just come to kill us and we we'll watch you and fold our arms to watch you kill our women and children. It's not possible. So you will die in Biafra and your spirit will never be alive to witness the round table discussion of how they are going to accept the referendum of Biafra and how Biafra will come. Because it is going to come and it is going to happen. Everything happening today will end up in a round table. And we have prepared for that. I am telling you. We have given an offer, a very reasonable offer, engage Finland to come as a mediator. That offer is on the table. We have also offered them even flight ticket and hotel to come and be an observer for the Biafra uh, Convention in Finland. Since they say that Simon Ekpa is unreachable, it's an opportunity for them to come. That offer has been given. Is the reasonable is it shows that somebody is reasonable, and the only people that are reasonable is the Biafra government, not in Nigeria, because they feel that they are untouched, they feel that they cannot talk to anybody, they feel that they can use gun and bullet to suppress us, like they do to every other thing that try to rise in Nigeria. And I'm telling them today that or uh, the with the gun and the barrels of the gun, you can never defeat us. The more you bring gun, the more stubborn and the more strong we become. I am telling you the fact. So you can never defeat us. But you see, after the foolish people have died, the remaining one will still come to the table and we are going to discuss the partition mm -hmm. of Nigeria and Biafra. Thank you very much. May God bless all of you in Europe. All right. Thank you very much, our Prime Minister and the Biafra crew. Yes, we are moving. We are seeing things ourselves. Everybody is confirming what our Prime Minister is saying. He is not just talking, he is talking a do. <laughs> Nigeria is in trouble, I must tell you the truth, honestly speaking. Oh, I can't hammer that they will release Mazinam Dekano and sign referendum so that something will remain for them. At least their military will remain. All right? Even, Mazi even said that if they want, we will sign the oil for them, let them go with the oil. But with our own human structure, and sense we'll be able to make up a country we'll be able to start somewhere we'll be able to build this nation as fast as possible and that is it everybody um please help us to stay glued to this very good channel help us to share like and subscribe thank you